M0FXB, welcome to my videos on the UVK5 K6 radios. Today I'm looking at the KD8 CEC waterfall and FM radio. So let's have a quick look. So scrolling down through, it's called UVK5 version 0.2V spectrum and waterfall added. I like the way it takes the whole screen like that. And you've got a different interface than we've seen in the previous with Exuma IJV, but you know, they're all, they all do a great job and I just thought I'd try this one out and there's the radio, it looks more like your traditional radio ETC. So let's scroll to the bottom and download the GitHub bin file, which is normally, keep going, look at this, you've got quite a few images here on the blue, I do have the blue radio, but we're on the UVK56 at the moment, that's using, that's actually got let me think now, that one's got APRS installed on it at the moment, which is made by KD8CEC. But right now, we're going to do this. You can see all the images, and it looks great. It's actually a waterfall. It's not just a scope. It's a, you know, it's not just a, a spectrum scope. It's a waterfall. So, got to be done, hasn't it? Scrolling down. Full instructions and the link will be there and I'll put a separate link with the GitHub download. Look, you've got all the instructions there. Wow, I'm actually looking forward to tinkering. Uh, and there's a video in the link, let's go down. There we are, one GitHub link. So we're gonna click that and we go to this page and then we're gonna go down and just, I think just download the top one. So I'm just gonna click the top one there it goes in my downloads folder top right and then I use IJV's firmware loader that looks like this and big thanks to IJV and just quickly click here the K5 program the links in the description as well download and when you open it it looks like this okay moving my radio around and the nice thing about the IJV and this is why I really like it is that you can back up your configuration as well, which is highly recommended if you can be bothered. So when it's not in firmware mode, so if I just plug it in now, like so, it should, and you select the correct COM port. So make sure your cable, UV5R cables in your PC, then just go device manager. I'm pretty sure I'm on 22 at the moment. Yep, 22. So just select 22 and it will instantly find your radio. Okay, uh, there you are. And if I want to read the configuration, I just click that and it, it saves a file for you. That's the config. And if I want to, and that gives you an option to save, I just go save and then read calibration. And you can obviously and save that, how quick it was. And this is all your hexel numbers, isn't it? It's excellent, isn't it? Right. So let's put it into firmware mode, but turn it off. Hold down the PTT, turn it on. If it doesn't work first time, just um, unplug the cable first and then do it. So we've done that, we'll go into firmware and we're gonna find, and it will know that we're in firmware mode. Go into firmware, find the download that we just did, which was called, let me find it. It's SC C E C two B. Double click, and it's going into the radio, and it will be nice and quick. And then when that completes, let's uh, let's fire up the radio. Just a quick one. If you want the waterfall, you do have to select the firmware file that is called V zero two V C. Make sure you do that one, not the B one. Okay. Let's go over to the instructions. To activate the radio, press the zero. Overwhelm the there you go. And seek refuge on Egyptian soil. Yeah, the looks piece, really good. Just turn it down a bit. Don't want to listen to their boring news. And to change that, you just go up and down. Okay. Pretty good. It actually works really well. Look at the top, look at the top section. That looks so cool. I'll get it a bit bigger. So you can see it. 
Now we have to do the, uh, the backlight. I like that. That just looks really good. Really good. Go back to Radio 4. And it sounds good as well. The backlight number is number, if I go menu, 49, okay? But it doesn't seem to work with the radio. But anyway, hold that again. Hold zero. You got your radio and you go up and down. And to come out, exit. Now to get the waterfall, hold down the five. It did work, so I did it just now. There you are. Just need some activity from my node. And you can see it starting to trickle down. What I'm going to do is activate my node, which is a G7 RPG node. You should definitely get one of these. And this is the control panel. So I'm just going to click it, come to life. Now, how cool is that? Now, I'm not hearing audio, so I'm just wondering if if there's a different setting to hear audio, but the waterfall's there and you can see there's activity. If I just turn on my other radio. All right, I've got it back on. Let's go back to the instructions. Just um, Maybe when the waterfall's on, you can't hear audio. So let's see what the instructions say. And as I'm scrolling to the instructions, you, you can save memory channels on your radio. It tells you what to do, to do here. Um, after setting the frequency you want to save, press one of the desired buttons, 0 to 9. Okay, so there's your memory. Just read the, the manual on that storing memory channels. Now the waterfall going down now. Okay, we're on this section here. So it says to change menu value, press the up and down side keys to exit spectrum. Press the exit. Start spectrum, hold down the five. Frequency position lock, what does that mean? On off. Okay, so you can lock it. And it does say receive on off. So let's try that. See if we get some audio. So yeah, that definitely worked. Hold down the star and you start to get receive audio. It sounds very good. M-E-T connected to M-0-F-X. Oh no, someone's not happy, but anyway. So let's go back to the manual. And I noticed that when I was pressing the menu button, it moves along the top. Zoom that in a bit more. What's it saying? My eyesight is bad, so it's actually good long distance, but l close distance, not great. But anyway, that's not important. So let's just get this level. Pressing through, it says P15, W5, scan, L25, is that the battery at the end? And 6.5K is what we're seeing. See if we can type a frequency live. No, we probably have to put the frequency in first. We'll do that in a sec. And external antenna would make a, a big difference. Now let's just scroll down the, the instructions a bit more. So what it says is that the, the first selection, when you're going across the top with the M, Since the measured values depending on bandwidth, you need to set everything again. So it says 6.5 is recommended. The second P is the offset position of spectrum. It is similar to the ATT function of measuring instrument, but it is not ATT because it is not in dB. The third W is the waterfall threshold. You can adjust this to display the waterfall you want. So let's do that one. And is it up and down? Or 
Yeah, it's changing with the button under the PTT. I noticed that the frequency did change. The frequency did change when I went up and down. So the side is the bat is the width of the scope, and the up and down is changing the frequency. If I exit the waterfall, put in one four five. Let's just go. Make sure we're in the right one here. I need to get into uh, VFO. Go F three. Then go one four five. 600 okay uh, and then go hold down the F see if we can get my that's my repeater GB3WR audio remember hold down the star no one there but you can see that there's some activity to the left we go if I hold my thumb it's moving across okay well I think you know how to play with it um, let's look, see what else we can see in instructions the fourth feature is the scan spectrum waterfall are operational receives the currently selected frequency. Okay, that's the, so let's go to that, the fourth. It's quite fast actually, with the up arrow. So as you know, I'm learning with you, you know that. Right, so, what's next? It receives the currently selected frequency, auto op operates in scan mode and switches to receive mode when the frequency reaches the trigger line. And look, you've got CW, SSB, the fifth L menu sets the trigger level when Auto, in auto mode. Remember this, the firmware that that is made by, I keep forgetting his call sign, KD8CEC, also allows you to transmit APRS with no hardware modification. So, going down it. So just check it out really. I'm just showing you me learning it. There's a video there in the same link. The bin file is there. Remember to select the V, 0.2 V. Have some fun, enjoy it. I think it's excellent. Thanks to KDHCC73, all the best.